All right, I'm gonna I hit recording again. Um, and that way, but now we'll have it, and I guess it'll be in two different clouds. Precious, you'll have the first half of our discussion, and the second half is gonna be inside of chaos. Um, cloud somewhere, which I assume- yeah, I do have access to it, so I can get it from there. Awesome. So as, as we were saying in the last discussion, I, there are those three interfaces and your question was, where do you wanna start? Because you need to start with one. And I was mm -hmm. hemming and hawing about which one to suggest starting with because I have, um, I have these different interests um, in play. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't have a direct answer. I mean, certainly I can facilitate uh, work with the, the Augur View project, which has not yet moved into the chaos organization because I don't yet want to support it, <laughs> but uh, it, it should be ready for that pretty soon. Um, uh, and then the question is like, I obviously uh, I'm looking toward having, you know, basically wrapping some of this eight knot project into it, which is another completely different discussion. But I guess I would say that when it comes to the design work, I certainly like the design work. Now this is presented using technology called Dash and Plotly. So this project, for example, I think you could style um, simply by using CSS. So if um, it depends, like what kind of design uh, is your group or are people on your team the most interested in? There's, there's, there's obviously design that makes things more visually appealing. Um, there's design that makes information more findable. Um, there's overall, you know, flow and interaction design. What, what conversations should we be having that would be of the greatest interest to the group that you have? So I, th I think um, the designers we have, they, they are like um, on this order, like they do both like visual appealing designs, like they do like different kinds of designs, right? And um, the person leading um, usually would want to create a design system, you know, which is Kingsley was supposed to be on this call, but he kind of like, he's not feeling well. So that's why instead of shifting the call, that's why we're recording. So like they do like different kinds of, it just depends on what's like, say for example, what's the, the objectives for um say for example it's not is and what's what is required to do on this site and then they would take that um feedback and uh, implement it depending on what you what your expectations are so I think they are quite diverse and could work with it, it, they just need that information of what's what are we trying to achieve with the site or the UI and work with that. Okay, so um, candidly speaking, I, I, which I tend to do anyway, I've worked, I've worked with design teams before and um, I, I know there is a, there's a part of it that's pure, like I guess graphic design and information architecture kinds of work. And I, I think what I'd like to start so, and then there's like seeing the results of that work. So mm -hmm. um, is there a thought, I guess, would the, would the process be one of, uh, first we do the graphic design piece and the graphic design of the flow. And then we, as a second step, deal with the implementation of that design. And some of the artifacts that might emerge from that process are um, images and CSS that could be used or employed in a particular interface, is is that kind of the flow? I want to make. I just want to make sure, like, I understand the flow, because I I don't want to like ask people to do design work if, um, like, I don't know how to make. I want to make sure that uh, all that that it's also able to get carried through, um, so they can see the results of their work. Uh, and none of these projects is like something anyone can just sit down at their desktop one day and run. Um, though I've yeah. also seen CS, like I've also seen oh. work where uh, designers 
take a take like take like something like this and then do there's like settings in your web browser where they can actually modify the CSS like live in the browser against a live site and effectively write the CSS for the site that way. Um, obviously, you can't do navigation or information architecture, but for, you know, you like for example, this could be made visually appealing, possibly with that kind of tool set. Okay, yeah, I think I I kind of like get get in also for the designers we have, um, they do not like they do not deal with code, um, like I think it's just right. the one that yeah, so it's more like, um, doing like the graphical aspect and then a developer would implement it. So most of them, a whole lot of them, are like just designers and not like they don't do like that's that's exactly what I expect when I'm working with yeah. designers. I don't expect them to be coders because software engineers, honestly, most of the time make terrible designers. Um, as you can see from this, this, this is built by a computer science student and you can tell, um, no criticism. It's really, it's cool what it does, but it's, there's, you know, and it's actually better design than some things I've seen, but obviously I think the information architecture is a little lacking. Like it doesn't really clearly present like, okay, here's a repo, and on any rando repo, you get this picture. This picture can be made better. This, the layout of it might be able to be made yeah. better. But at the end of the day, this is kind of like a crappy way to navigate, is to page through everything in, the, in my view. And I think, honestly, this is also kind of a crappy way to navigate, where I have to search for one repository or many. But I do like, I, I like the technical visualizations here. Um, yeah, way better than the other one where you can just see it. Yeah, so so from my perspective, um, you know, it, uh, so this is the project I have the least control over, of course, and it's also the project that's not, um, it's using Augur for the data, but it, it is actually not a, a official it's not a chaos project it's just using chaos technology and that's not as much of a concern to me as as it as you might think i i care about providing our community with like tools that they can understand and use um and i think like for example i think compass is certainly the most visually appealing example of that that i've seen and i like how it's building off of these metric models that have been developed so I think, mm -hmm. but I also think it probably needs the least UI work. <laughs> yeah. The least design, it leads the least design work of the so, three because, I think I'm, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to like, like for eight knots and the, the, um, the other one, the auger. auger yes. It's called yeah. auger view. Yeah, I'll oh, put the, I'll put the repo, yeah. I'll put the repo okay. link in there as well. Okay, now for this, for this, do um you know I, I know something that Kingsley can do is you know create a system a design system for one and it's applicable for the other one because they're quite similar right and that would be easy to work with the two I don't know if yeah I I think that that, that, that you know happen. like like what I, I think I think especially since you know we're doing design work I think one of the reasons so I showed you three different interfaces, not to confuse the matter, but because my experience working with designers is if they see different examples, it kind of helps them to inspire. Mm -hmm. um, it helps inspire kind of like where people are trying to go. And um, here, like in, in the case of both Compass, well, in the case of all three of these interfaces that, that I've illustrated here, we're going to have in the you know, hundreds of thousands of different repositories in each of these. And, and so there will be more repositories available than a person can conceivably ever look at individually. And mm -hmm. so part of, part of it is the individual identifying the repositories of interest. And I think like the basic flow for that, I'm not saying it looks like crap, um, but the basic flow for that and let me just uh let me just find a github repo i thought this was real but maybe it's not oh there's nothing there's nothing in it 
and there's no public repository, so never mind. That's why that one didn't work. Um, I'm just trying to think of a. I'm trying to think of an org that I haven't already added. <laughs> um, I'm do layer five. Do which what? Which one? Layer five. Let me let me type it. Layer five. Um, in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Of course, when you're sharing the chat, like this, oh, layer five. Okay, got it. It's my focus left. All right. So, oops, where was I here? I'm positive I haven't typed that one before. And then I click add, and I maybe it will give me an error, but maybe it won't. It says could not. Okay, so that there might be a back end thing. Let me. I'm just curious if um, so anyway, if that were to work, that's kind of what I'd like to see then with a little bit more information, obviously, about the repo, then it's and not um, like fairly. Yeah, well, I mean, it would be OK if it listed all the repos in my profile that I care about, but um, it would be good if I saw more than a number, like if I saw the URL for it, for example. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be significantly more useful. And I'm so just, um, go ahead. Is there a documentation for like, on how this works? Because um, I knew um, the designer might also want to work with that, like understand what Org View does. And also with that there's, will help the design process. I think there's, so there is, um, if I go to, um, there's some documentation, but like I said, it's not released yet specifically because I don't want to have to support it yet. And one of the reasons I don't want to have to support it yet is uh, that there's pretty good documentation for installing it. Uh, there's, But there's also, and the, the main branch that's actually being developed is dev. Um, and you can see, there's a Docker config um, in here. And if if uh, that Docker config, like to run it, you probably, I think you need to provide the URL of an Augur instance and one that I can share with you that always works is that one. And maybe maybe you want to try explaining Augur View to like like what does Augur View do? So all Augur View does, Augur View is actually a replacement for I can show you a fourth interface. Mm -hmm. Um so this is actually the uh, original default Augur interface. Uh, where you can see insights if they exist, but they usually don't. Uh, repos, so currently stored repos, or you can see the groupings. So if I click chaos, I see these groupings. It tells me the commit count, the total use count. I don't actually think this is a bad information design. I think what's missing is the sort of just show me my stuff and allow me to group my repos part. Um, and the intention ultimately is to provide like, you can see that we provide like, here's a uh, lines of code changes by the top 10 authors, very similar to what eight not slash Aspen provide. Um, these are just not dynamic, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm sorry, I'm babbling. Am I answering your question or did I just go off on a tangent? So you're talking about Augur right now. I think, I think you're linking it back to Augur view. So yeah, right. So. So this is, so the reason that Augur View came about principally, honestly, is because this is all based on Vue.js and JavaScript. And the node environment is um, prohibitively expensive to maintain. So if we were to update all, all of the libraries in this interface to be current with their current Node.js uh, versions, everything would break. Lots of things wouldn't work. There's, there's um, historically no commitment on the part of the Node community to backwards compatibility. So this means that if you've built Node systems ever, Node.js stuff, 
it just breaks on every release and it's just it's just very labor intensive to maintain so auger view came to exist primarily because of how terrible the node.js environment is and mm -hmm. i started you know we chose twitter bootstrap bootstrap because it doesn't require i mean it doesn't have zero javascript but you can build a lot without javascript um which like i said is extremely expensive to maintain um okay so um all of you is like so, um, an improvement um i can even know it's well, improvement like well it's, if, it's a it, it's a basically a more maintainable technology stack for mm -hmm. i'll send you this oh, i just sent you this other link here um and you can talk to the back end of it either this way i'm putting these links in slack mm -hmm. so the this is those those um i i'm not sure if auger view requires the port number or not and i have i actually have uh the api mapped to port 80 anyhow on that server but um one of those two links at the bottom i think are, are the information that somebody who wanted to fire up auger view would need to fire it up so that they had live data available to them um, without having to stand up a separate instance of auger all on their own which yeah. is, and this one has is a data. yeah it has data right so you can at least you know see what it looks like when you do things mm, okay Okay, I get, I get. Because uh, um, so, I think why I wanted differences so that it would help, like, um, the designer when designing, like, know, um, understand more of like how, um, the UI for Augur view should look, you know, to aid like user experience, you know. Yeah. And I, I think what's missing from all of these sites is any explanation whatsoever of what these projects are, what what are their constraints. You know, there's no there's no like walking a person through these are metrics for open source repositories and this is how they're helpful. Um, and so I think like when when somebody recently went to install Augur, their their comment to me was, well, what's it for? And I, and I think if you looked at any of these projects documentation for installation, you would probably walk away with the exact same question. So when you go to one of these instances of Augur or Grimoire Lab or Compass or Augur View, which is just the front end on the Augur back end, all of them share that that limitation that it's really not clearly explained what what these what, how to how to use these metrics to tell your story as a project. And I, I think if the, and this is probably a really important thing I'm gonna say, but maybe not. If I imagine that I am the person who wants to understand some set of repositories, I, I come to one of these tools, I want to just give it a list of the repositories I care about. And once I give it that list, have it tell me how long it's gonna take to produce the metrics and then when i have like either in the case of compass where where you know i really do like the fact that oops compass is organized by metric models i mean i really really like that because i think so the metric models kind of emerged within the chaos community from in practice the way that people were actually using metrics together right so they yeah. i think i think you can say that they've emerged from use and Compass's information architecture does a really good job of presenting that that view. The, these are metric models. It's you know yeah. they, they could be more clear that this they could be more clear that code quality guarantee is a metric model. Um, but that's you know this project just started like two months ago, so it's doing yeah. fantastic. I just saw something very interesting. At the top, you can navigate from three months, six months, one year, two years. Yeah, that's cool. Isn't it? I mean, this I I I think this is spectacular work. Like I had a little trouble yeah. logging and making it work, but I I had the same trouble with Augur View as well. So uh, 
we will call, well, I think in, in every case, these are, um, so I think there's like one problem, one, one challenge is explanation. Another challenge is navigation. I like the navigation organization by um, metric model that, that Compass has. Um, I like the dynamism of the visualizations that 8 knot slash Aspen has. Um, I like the comparison abilities that are in this old interface and also just the ability to navigate and then quickly decide if like what I didn't show you is like if I want to compare a couple of repos uh, with each other, like, you know, I like the ability to do this kind of comparison. So I've mm. got two repos I'm curious about that are in this database that I, I'm, I'm curious about. And, you know, here now I can see like commits per week. Um, Grimoire Lab Kibiter, which I guess that is what I clicked, okay. Versus NumPy and you can see, you know, different variations. What is, what is, uh, you know, what could be improved about these graphs? Uh, I think showing them as bar charts like 8 not does would be good. I think using Z scores would be helpful because obviously when you have a spike of 160,000, it compresses the whole graph. Um, and it's hard to do a comparison because you can see the Y axis is basically determined by the highest number um, in the data, right? So if you have one super high number, it distorts the Y axis, um, which is why like, this kind of windowing, which wouldn't be the designer's um, responsibility to implement, but I think I think this kind of windowing is extremely useful, um, and yeah. the capability the capability to do it, I you know I think I think it belongs in every design of of metrics. So like the perfect world is that kind of visualization with the ability to add repos, and then the, the second so those are like the information navigation is one problem. Uh, beautifulness is another problem. So I'm gonna type these in Slack. Um, uh, uh, one information, you know, you know what I, is information architecture still a term? I'm old, is information architecture still a phrase that's used to describe the overall organization of a website? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just like some of the knowledge, like mine, when I work with like designers. design systems, <laughs> that's the word I hear a lot. So. Okay. And then this, the second is when I land on the homepage, explain what's possible. Um, when I navigate to a repo, explain what I am looking at. Um, comparisons. I can, browser. And, I can see what you're doing. Oh, um, I'm, I'm typing in Slack. Uh, I can, okay. uh, and I'm only, I'm only typing in Slack because of uh, the ephemeralness of Zoom chat. <laughs> um, So I'll also, uh, since um, I'll also put this in Zoom chat um, when I find Zoom chat. Okay. Uh, here we go. There it is in Zoom chat. And it's a little less structured because I guess the numbering didn't carry over. Um, <laughs> but you know, you could, you can share that information with whomever. I just find it easier. Like I, I find it challenging to go find a Zoom chat from two weeks ago. <laughs> and so, <laughs> So if I put it in Slack, at least, you know, there's a much better chance I can find it. Um, yeah. and, you, and you can find it as well. So I think what I'll do is um, next week, I think Kinsley does the designer would be better. So I'll have like a sync with him and uh, okay. also share accordance. And um, then we- And I'm happy to meet up with him. I'm happy to meet up with him again when he's feeling better and after you've shared this stuff. Okay, I, I would definitely set that up. Then also, I think I want to share, um, so there's someone that reached out to me from um, 
the Pi Data Ghana community that wanted to do a sprint with chaos, um, with the Python um, related projects we have. Um, I wanted to connect sure. the group with you. What is, what is the Pi Data? Is that the name of the project, Pi Data? Yeah, let me, let me try to search for it, Pi Data Ghana. Let me see. You know, they should have like a GitHub, yeah. Um, do you even have a, a site? Um, let me share, share this with you. So they wanted to like do like a sprint, um, like, like with chaos, like a collaboration sort of. Um, and I really do not have information on how that would look like. Um, but um, yeah, like okay. I, 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 I not. I'll, sh I'll share the screen since we're yeah, recording. Yeah, we can All stop right. record. We can stop record actually. Since this is uh, you, okay. All right. Yeah, I can. I can stop record. Um, as soon as I find the button. Uh, there we go. Um, okay. Stop recording.